I believe that something we will all agree on is that all of us are on a journey through life. Every single one of us, we are all on a journey through life. Now, this is often said, but rarely does anyone ever speak about where they are going on their journey. We just happen to all be on the journey, but nobody ever talks about where they are going. So I feel like asking you today, where are you going on your journey? Where are you trying to get to? Where, where's your end destination? All right. yeah. I believe that ultimately there are two directions that that we can travel on this journey. Yes, all of us, we walk different paths through life. But again, I tell you today, these paths that we walk, they can only lead in two directions. The reason I say this to you today is because I believe that there are only two end destinations (laughs) that we can reach on this journey through life. As you have heard me say before, the journey through life, it is not an easy one. Mm -hmm. It is not an easy one for anybody, regardless of who you may be. Mm -hmm. There are going to be many hardships that you face on your journey. From flatlands to hills to mountains to valleys, Mm -hmm. there always seems to be another hill. There always seems to be another mountain. There always seems to be another valley on our journey. In other words, what I'm trying to say, there always seems to be trials and tribulations and then more trials and then more tribulations as we go along the way. So the hope would be that at the end of our journey, the hope would be that the destination that we reach, that it is a good destination Mm -hmm. and not one that is filthy, not one that is bad, but again, one that we could be happy with, one that we can find happiness in and one that we can smile about and rejoice about Uh, today. I don't know if you hear me. So I believe that every single person is always in need of good support, in need of good guidance, Mm -hmm. in in need of good direction and good encouragement to be able to head in the best direction so that they can reach that good end destination. To think or to believe that you can reach that good destination without good direction, Mm -hmm. without good support without good guidance and without good encouragement would be very arrogant. And quite frankly, it would be very foolish. So again, I feel I must ask you today, where are you going? And are you certain that you are going the right way to get to where you want to go? Now, when I think about the journey that we are all on through life, my mind, it always goes back to the children of Israel. It goes back to their journey from Egypt to Mm -hmm. the promised land. I don't know if you follow me just yet, but Mm -hmm. to me, Mm -hmm. it is the best representation Mm -hmm. of the journey that we are all on today through life. You see, there is, I tell you, a land of promise Mm -hmm. that has been promised to both you and I. There is a land of promise that has been promised to all people by the Lord, our God. Mm -hmm. This land, I want you to understand that it is not a land that is of our world. Mm -hmm. This land, this land of promise by God, It is a land that is beyond our world. And so I want to know from you today, are you trying to go in the direction of that land? Are you headed in the direction of this good land that has been promised by the Lord, our God? So when I think about the children of Israel, Mm -hmm. 
journeying to the promised land. All right. I think about, and I don't know if y'all have ever noticed this. I think about how they did not have to guess about which direction to head in. All right. It wasn't a guessing game for All them. Right. All right. See, we, we know the story very well, don't we? We know that God led the children of Israel by day by a pillar of cloud and that he led the children of Israel at night by a pillar of fire. In other words, the Lord was directing them. God was giving them direction. Mm -hmm. The Lord went even as far as to tell the children of Israel when it was time for them to rest And when it was time for them to move while they were on that journey to the promised land, we're told that when it was time for the children of Israel to rest, that the glory of God, that cloud, it would rest over the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And when it was time for them to go, the glory of God, that cloud, it would move. Mm -hmm. It was time for them to get up and go. So when you stop and and when you think about it for just a second, Mm -hmm. God, he was herding. He was guiding the children of Israel as a shepherd would herd and guide his flock. God was herding the children of Israel from one place to another place, Mm -hmm. a place of safety, a place of security Mm -hmm. within his sheepfold or within his sheep pen. Do you want to reach such a place on your journey? Mm -hmm. Where are you going? Again, as shown by their journey, Mm -hmm. there were two end destinations that the children of Israel could reach. Those two destinations was either the promised land Mm -hmm. or the wilderness. Now, due to not following God's direction, we know that a generation of the children of Israel, we know that they never reached the promised land that God had promised to them. That's right. That's right. We know that they ended up dying in the wilderness because they wanted to turn away from the land Mm -hmm. that God had promised to them. So instead of their end destination being the land of promise, Mm -hmm. their destination ended up being just the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The generation that was obedient to God's direction, they joined Joshua Mm -hmm. and they crossed the Jordan and they entered into the land that was promised to them. Mm -hmm. Again, I tell you today, that there are two destinations that one can reach on their journey through life. I don't know if you're following me here yet today. Yes, again, there are many different paths on this journey, but at the end of this journey, you're going to reach one of these end destinations. Depending on the direction that you chose to travel in on your journey, you will either reach the land that the Lord has promised, that is heaven, or you're going to go in another direction and you're going to reach a land of waste, a land of destruction, a land of, in other words, a land of death. Now, if you desire to reach the land of promise that has been promised to us by the Lord, you will want to travel in the direction that God guides you in. Come on, come on. You will want to travel in the direction that God directs you to go in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some walk with confidence towards that land of promise that is the land of heaven. At the very same time, some will confidently walk in the direction away from heaven. The land of promise. Then there are several others who are out there on their journey. Mm -hmm. They are wandering in circles. They are wandering in the wilderness, Uh if you will. They are unsure of which direction Mm -hmm. they should go in. Now, 
how or why does that happen? How or why does one end up wandering aimlessly in the wilderness? All right. How does one end up wandering aimlessly on their journey through life? Now, I suppose our first answer this, to this question, it'll fall back to one not having faith. It'll fall back to one not believing in God. They are fully convicted in not believing in the Lord. Now, faith, it certainly plays a role in this matter. But I tell you today that the wandering soul is not a soul that is fully convicted. The the wandering soul, it is not a soul that is confidently walking in a direction away from heaven. They're just going around in a circle. The one that is confidently walking in a direction that is away from the land of promise they do it confidently in their faith of not believing in God. All right. yeah. There is no doubt in their mind that they are going in the right direction mm-hmm. in their own eyes. Mm-hmm. So I tell you today, I ain't concerned about them. All right. I'm just going to let them go where they want to go. My concern today is about that wandering soul, yeah, yeah. but not just the wandering soul, but the, the soul that is also a, a believer, one who genuinely believes in the Lord. I'm concerned about them today. Right. So let's focus on, on us and, and the wandering soul today mm-hmm. here. You see, the wandering soul is a soul that is lost in and does not know which way to go. That wandering soul is a confused soul. Yeah. Yeah. So for the wandering soul, we have to figure out where this confusion is coming from. Mm-hmm. But I tell you today that we don't have to f- try to figure this out just for the wandering soul, but we also have to be concerned about those who genuinely believe as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, confusion circles all about us today. Mm-hmm. When I think about where such confusion comes from for the soul, I consider all of the doctrines that is present in our world. All right. All right. Now, this has been a subject that I have touched on in the past couple of weeks, but again, I feel we must focus on it here again today. Mm-hmm. You see, there are many doctrines in the world today that speaks to what one should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. There are many doctrines in the world today that want to advise, advise you in the direction in which you should go on your journey. And those doctrines say, Hey, if you do this, then you will be all right. Mm -hmm. If you do this, it is good for you. If you do this, you will live. Mm -hmm. And if you've listened to my sermon the past couple of weeks, that'll sound very familiar. So what this means is that for the wondering soul, there are many advisors that are advising what one should do. Because there are many voices that is out there saying what one should do, it can become quite hard and it can be quite confusing for that soul to be able to discern which direction they should go. It can become confusing as to what is helpful and what is not helpful. Again, I honestly believe that this is not only true for that wandering soul, but I believe at times that this is true for those who are of genuine faith in the Lord. There are many voices. There are many doctrines out there in the world trying to tell you what you ought to do in order to be able to live. Mm -hmm. On this journey, there will be times where the path can be filled with fog that can confuse us and can throw us off track, Mm -hmm. off the right path. So I share with you that when this happens to me, I am one who stands by my faith. And in those days, I diligently, I pray to the Lord, my God, Mm -hmm. to clear up that fog of confusion Mm -hmm. that is trying to confuse me while I am on my journey. God, as we know, he is not the author of confusion. He is the one that can clear up Mm -hmm. our pathway. Mm -hmm. He can move that fog out of the way for us Mm -hmm. so that we can go in the direction that we ought to be going in. Mm -hmm. 
So I tell you today in my prayers, I pray to God. I pray for him to be with me. I pray for God to guide me. I pray for God to give me direction in where I should go. You see, I, I do this because I desire mm -hmm. to always be headed in the right direction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I desire to always be headed in the direction towards the land that he has made a promise to me that I could dwell in. Should I have faith in him? Mm -hmm. Do you do the same today? Mm -hmm. Again, where are you going? Oh, yeah. I tell you that we are all both the one that walks confidently in faith and the wandering soul. I tell you today that we are all in need of God's support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are all in need of God's guidance. Mm -hmm. We are all in need of God's encouragement. Yeah, yeah. We are in need of his direction mm -hmm. while we are on this journey. Now, sadly, as we know, the right direction to some is the wrong direction. All right. And at the same time, the wrong direction to some is the right direction to others. Mm -hmm. This is the confusion of our world today. In the 30th chapter of Isaiah, we see that the Lord clears up for us any confusion as he spoke to Israel mm -hmm. about which direction is the right direction. He spoke to them about which direction is proper. Mm -hmm. By the time of Isaiah, I want you to understand Israel had been influenced by the counsels of others yeah, yeah. to head in a direction that caused them to stray from God. Mm -hmm. We'll see there in the very first verse of this chapter, we see that in stray from the Lord, God said that Israel had devised plans. And he says that these devised plans were not of the Holy Spirit. They were not of his spirit. We see there. Mm -hmm. And in devising these plans and in committing to these plans, we see there that they were against his spirit. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that God said that all they managed to do was to add to their sins. Mm -hmm. During that time, rather than put their faith, their trust in the counsel, that is the advice of God. And rather than doing that, they were putting their trust. They were putting their faith in the council of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, rather than trusting in the direction and where God would tell them to go, they were looking to the Egyptians mm -hmm. for their help. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Who do you listen to today? Who's directing your steps today? Mm -hmm. See, at that time, Israel was under the threat of the Assyrians, a great and mighty power during that day. Yeah, yeah. And so Israel, they were in, in a moment there of great need. Mm -hmm. They were in a moment of trouble. And so we would think that Israel in that moment, they should have been seeking for the Lord, their God. Mm -hmm. Yet they chose Egypt and the strength of Pharaoh, we're told there in the second verse. In the face of their enemies, in the face of great adversity, they were not looking to the one that had delivered their forefathers from All right. the land of Egypt. All right. All right. Rather, they was turning back to those same ones that held their forefathers in bondage. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> Who do you turn to for help in life on your journey today? <laughs> You turn to the one who extends his hands out to help you, or do you turn to the one who can't offer you any help at all? One who may have did something to bring you great harm before in the past. Think about how crazy that sounds. And let's keep in mind here that the forefathers of these Israelites, let's keep in mind as we discussed in our Sunday school lesson this week, 
They had received the law and the commandments from him, from God. So in other words, they had received counsel. They had received guidance and advice from the Lord in which direction they should go to, especially in these moments on their journey. Yet Israel was choosing to ignore God's direction. They were choosing to go in their own direction, Mm -hmm. ignoring God for their own voice or the voice of others. Do you do that today? Think about it. Now, where do you suppose going in a direction that is opposite of where the Lord is telling you to go? Where do you suppose that is going to lead you? Where do you think that you're going to end up Mm -hmm. when a God is telling you to go one way, Mm -hmm. but you choose to go the other way? Do you really think that that is good for you on your journey through life? In the third verse there in the 30th chapter of Isaiah, we see that for Israel, we see that such a choice, it led to shame and humiliation. As we know, the Northern kingdom, Israel was conquered and destroyed by the Assyrians. Mm -hmm. When they chose to go in a direction that opposed the Lord's direction, we see in the first, the ninth and the 10th verse there that God considered them to be rebellious children. Do you rebel against the Lord today Mm -hmm. when God tells you to go this way? Mm -hmm. Are you a rebellious child when God says, hey, don't do that, but you go off and you do it anyway. Are you that rebellious child? Don't be that rebellious child. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I always wonder about this, when I read this in scripture, Mm -hmm. and when I think about the Israelites Mm -hmm. and the children of Israel, when they did that, what they did at Mount Sinai, what we discussed in our Sunday school lesson this week, I always have one word that comes to my mind. Why? Why? You know, it's like when you tell your child to do something and they go off and they do it anyway, they act up. And and it seems that at those times, the only word that you can come up with is why? Why did you do that? (laughs) My brother, he he does that to his dog all the time that he has that runs. Why? Why did you do that? (laughs) Why? That's, that's, That's the only thing that I can come up with. Why did Israel choose to ignore God's counsel? And I suppose that that. I don't just have to to ask that question just of Israel. Mm -hmm. I suppose that this same question could be asked of of us in the world today. Mm -hmm. It could be asked for, for many who live in our world today. Why do you refuse the counsel of God? Better yet, why do you not trust the counsel, the advice, The guidance, Mm -hmm. the direction of God when God is telling you which way you ought to go. Mm -hmm. Why do you choose your own direction over the one who created you, the one who knows all things, who knows your future, who knows what he has in store for you? Why do you go against him for your own ways when you know nothing. Why? When you don't know where to go, why don't you listen to the one who can offer you true help? You see, I I believe that this happens again today. I believe that it is due to the many doctrines, Mm -hmm. the many voices that roams around in your head today that is present in our world. And you see these doctrines, these voices that, that, that we hear all the time, every day, it can begin to cloud our judgment, mm-hmm. not just for the one who genuinely believes, but for the wondering soul as well. Yeah, yeah. You see, we again were born in a world that was filled with, with doctrines, many doctrines, and these doctrines were doctrines of wickedness. And you see, not only were we born in it, but we still live in this same world today by birth and by growing up in this world filled with all of these doctrines, we were indoctrinated 
by these doctrines, these many doctrines, they, they became a part of us. They became a, a part of our way. You see, for some of the children of Israel, it became really difficult for them to break away from those ways that they had learned along the way. For the children of Israel, when they were in the bondage of Egypt, they learned the ways of Egypt, the Egyptians, mm -hmm. and, and, and they could not break away. Some of them could not break away from those ways of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And so they began to, to practice worshiping those idols. Mm -hmm. When God was saying, you should not have any other gods but me. Mm -hmm. They were still going out and worship the calf of gold, as we said in our Sunday school lesson mm -hmm. this week. During the days of Isaiah, it was hard for, for many of those of Israel to break away from the doctrines of those that had lived in the land of promise. Mm -hmm. They practiced idolatry. Mm -hmm. They practiced pagan worship and sacrifice. Along with fornication, it became a, a part of their way. Mm -hmm. Wickedness became a part of their way. And they could not break away from it. When they were confronted by the prophets of God, hey, that is wrong, break away from it. They said to the seers, we'll see there in the 10th verse of the 30th chapter of Isaiah, they said to the seers, do not see. And to the prophets, they said, do not prophesy to us right things. Listen to that. They knew what the prophets were saying to them were the right things. But again, that veil was over their eyes, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. they, they, they said to us, don't do it. Don't prophesy to us these things, but give us some smooth words. Mm -hmm. Give us some words that'll, that'll make us feel good about the wickedness that we are doing. Mm -hmm. That was the direction that they wanted. Right. Instead of being, hey, you should go this way. They were saying, no, we don't want to go that way, even though it's the right way to go. We want to stay going this way. Listen mm -hmm. to how foolish that sounds. Mm -hmm. How many of you are doing that today? For the one who is a genuine believer, our judgment, it can also be, again, clouded by the doctrine that comes natural to us. We have a nature in us that will tell us to do one thing while the Holy Spirit dwells with us and tells us to do another thing. Actually, I have found in our trials and in our tribulations that our old nature is what obscures and fogs up the path the most. It fogs up our direction, the direction in which we should go in. Instead of heeding the voice of the spirit in our times of adversity, in our times of great need, we end up rushing with that clouded judgment because we've been listening to our old man too much. And we go running off with anxiety and filled with all kind of fear. We go running off in the wrong direction, headed away from where the Holy Spirit is telling us to go because we don't trust the words of the spirit. We trust our voice or the voice of those who are around us saying, hey, yeah, keep going that way. Mm -hmm. Giving us those words that make us feel good about the direction that we're going in mm -hmm. rather than going in the direction of the Holy Spirit because they don't like the direction of the Holy Spirit. Check who is around you today feeding you directions in which you ought to go. So I can only imagine that if that is happening to the one who is of genuine faith, I can only imagine how obscure things are for those who are confused by the many doctrines that are present in our world today. Now, the Lord, we should understand he will not allow our vision to be clouded. He will not allow our vision to be obscured by the fog of confusion. We ought to choose to listen to him because he does not desire for us to be confused about the direction in which we ought to go. Right. You see, God will not allow this to happen because he desires for the righteous one to remain on the right path. And he desires for that wandering soul to know the right way in which they ought to go. So we should do one thing and one thing only. We should heed the direction. We should heed the voice of God. To the one who is of genuine faith, mm -hmm. 
And to the one whose soul is lost and confused, the one who is wondering, I tell you today that you are encouraged to come out of that fog of confusion. Mm -hmm. You are encouraged by God to get out of that fog by getting away from all of those voices, those various voices that try to advise you and try to influence your direction, the direction that you take on your journey. You may recall from my sermon last week that I referenced what Paul said to Timothy about certain voices that are present in our world today. In the sixth chapter of first Timothy, the third and the fourth verse, Paul told Timothy and therefore us as well, that there are voices in the world that are proud and they know nothing. They are, Paul said, obsessed with disputes and arguments over words that produce only envy, strife, and reveling. From those, Paul said in the fifth verse of that sixth chapter, he said that we, the genuine believer, and even those who are wondering, lost, and confused, that we should withdraw ourselves from them. From those who will confuse you, from those who will cloud your judgment, Paul said, Move away from them. Get away from them. Break away from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul isn't the only one that says this in scripture. In the book of Hebrews, the writer, he essentially repeated this same statement. The writer of Hebrews wrote, do not be cared about with various and strange doctrines. Mm -hmm. For it is good that the heart be established by grace is what the writer said, be established by the grace of God that we should not be entertained with foods that do not profit us, is what the writer of Hebrews said there. So we should let our hearts, we should let our soul, we should let our spirit be established by the grace of God and not by the doctrines, the voices of man, or even the doctrines, the voice of our old self that is always trying to whisper words of encouragement in our ears. The only one whose voice we should be listening to, whose direction we should be listening to is that of the Lord, our God. Now, when this statement was written in the book of Hebrews, and I quote it from Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the ninth verse, Christ had come and he had fulfilled his purpose. So the people, they were again, no longer living under the law and the commandments. Mm -hmm. The people, they were living under grace, the grace of God. Yet what was happening was something that still happens today. People were letting their hearts be established by the voices of others who are proud and know nothing. They also participated in performing certain rituals like offering up sacrifices with the belief that, that doing those things would, would make them good in God's eyes, Mm -hmm. that it would please the Lord. But the days of offering up vain sacrifices and performing rituals, they had long passed by them. But the people were still choosing to listen to those who were going off and and doing those things. Mm -hmm. The people who were going off into the wrong direction. The last thing that they should have been doing was listening to those who were headed the wrong way. Mm -hmm. The last thing that we should be doing today is listening to those who are going the wrong way. Let them go the wrong way. Let them keep on going the wrong way all they want. Mm -hmm. You go the right way. You go the direction that that the Lord has told you to go in. Mm -hmm. Are you going the wrong way today? Are you going in the wrong direction because you are listening to and following the wrong doctrines? Tell you again, break away from those doctrines. Do not be cared about with various and strange doctrines that is present in our world today. To clear up some confusion, God, I want you to understand, he does not ask for you to participate in any strange rituals of religion. You see, what God desires from you is genuine faith. 
What God desires from you is trusting in him and his counsel, mm -hmm. his word, his guidance, his support, his direction, his encouragement. This is what the Lord wants you to do. Mm -hmm. See here in my key verse for today, we see again that the Lord said through Isaiah, your ears shall hear a word behind you mm -hmm. saying, this is the way walk in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whenever you turn to the right hand, that word is going to be there encouraging you go this way. Mm -hmm. Whenever you turn to the left, mm -hmm. that voice is going to be there encouraging you to go that way. This word, this voice, this doctrine, I want you to understand that is God. Mm -hmm. That is the Lord speaking. Mm -hmm. That is his counsel. That was his counsel towards Israel. And that is his counsel towards us today who are of genuine faith. Mm -hmm. When the Lord tells us the way that we should move, we should go that way. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. When God tells us to rest, we ought to take a break. All right. When God tells us to move, that's when we move. Mm -hmm. In other words, when the Lord tells you to wait, you wait. Mm -hmm. Don't go off and try to do something yourself. Wait on the Lord mm -hmm. and he will renew your strength. Yeah. Yeah. Wait on the Lord for his direction. And when he tells you to move, you will walk and you will not faint. Mm -hmm. You will run you will go and you don't have to worry about anything that is in your path. Right. You will know and you will be able to move with confidence. Do you hear me here today? Mm -hmm. When the Lord tells us to move, that's when we move mm -hmm. his guidance and his encouragement. It comes through the Holy spirit mm -hmm. at the very same time. I want you to understand today that that same spirit that resides in us and guides us. It also resides in those who are of genuine faith as well. And they may share with you an encouraging word. Yeah. They may give you direction when you aren't listening to the one that resides in you as well. The genuine believer should always seek the counsel of the Lord. The genuine believer should always listen to the counsel of God. Mm -hmm. Now, do you realize that the children of Israel, they had to be obedient they had to follow that cloud and that fire of God in order for them to reach the promised land. Had they not been obedient, they would have remained lost and they would have never reached the promised land. They would have just remained lost in the wilderness. What do you suppose that means for you today? What do you suppose that means for us, for all of us who the Holy spirit desires to lead to the land of God's heavenly kingdom? In order for us to reach that end destination, we should do one thing and one thing only. We should heed the voice of God in him directing us to his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Should we not heed the voice of the spirit, we will end up lost and wandering aimlessly until we reach an end destination that is separate from him. Whether you realize this or not, you are currently being watched and you're even being judged about the direction that you are going on this journey. Mm -hmm. First, you are being judged by all those that are around you. You are being watched by all of those that are around you. Now you may actually feel like Paul felt about this when he wrote about this to those who are of Corinth. To the Corinthians, Paul wrote that he wasn't concerning himself about those who judged him. Paul, he said that he found it to be a very small thing to be judged by others as he did not even judge himself. However, I do want to note that Paul said to the Corinthians that those who judge us should see us as both servants and as stewards of the Lord. Mm -hmm. At the very same time, you should know that the direction that you are taking, it is all, it is also being watched by the Lord, our God. God is watching to see where you are going to go. And at the end of the day, he is going to have the final ruling over where it is that you end up. You see, the Lord will determine who enters into his land of promise. 
So if you desire to enter into that land of promise from the Lord, then you should definitely listen to his guidance. You should listen to his direction. And if you do so, you'll be able to enter into his promised land. Paul, again, he was not bothered by how others would look at him or how others would judge him because he knew there was a far higher judge. He knew where he wanted to end up. He wanted to end up in heaven. And so Paul considered that it would be best for him to go where God took him, the direction that God led him in. So I tell you today that we should always turn to the Lord and we should always seek his direction while we are on this journey. Yes, this is another message about God going to judge us. Yes, this is another message about going to heaven because I want to go to heaven mm -hmm. and I want you to be there with me in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage you today to go the right direction on your journey through life. Mm -hmm. That should be the end destination that you desire to reach. Do you desire to reach that land of heaven? Mm -hmm. You de do you desire to reach that land of promise from the Lord? You see, if we travel through life with this mindset, where we would listen and heed the voice of God, I tell you that we are going to reach that land. And there is nothing that anybody can do about it. God is going to keep us on the right track and we will one day be with him in his heavenly kingdom. Amen. 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 Amen.